Hello everybody, welcome back to Ag with Emma. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. I'm a grain car driver on a custom harvest crew. In today's video, we are going to cover odds and ends, breakdowns, just a bunch of stuff that happened while we were in Nebraska because I was honestly running around so much in this grain cart <laughs> that I didn't get a ton of footage, but we did break down a couple times, um, just wear and tear on machines, you know. If you don't want them to break, don't use them kind of thing. So we'll show you that and I'll catch you at the end. Thanks for being here. So I don't try to mess everything up. It's just that, you know, it's like, ooh, we're gonna give her a learning experience today, <laughs> you know? So what happened was this bolt in my grain cart came out of the auger stand on the outside, and I guess there was already prior issues with it, but they had kind of fixed that, welded it back up. Um, so we had to put a new bolt in and weld the inside as well as the outside. Right here, you can see where it's cracked along that black plate and the edge of the green plate that's under the black plate. The, the bolts hold it right there, so... It was kind of cracked all the way around and I noticed it was shaking back and forth and that was not usual so that bolt just kind of sheared off that one right there um and it was interesting to learn about that I guess I <laughs> would prefer to not to but oh well so and then I got distracted there was a big quad tractor you know driving by so had to look at that and then we got it all welded, got the bolt put back in, and welded the outside. And then we checked the belts, and those were fried, and I smashed my finger real bad. So anyways, grain card, one, Emma, zero. That was a lovely turn of events for our Saturday afternoon. We were supposed to be done by now because we ran into white corn, but I noticed that stand shaking, and I was like, that ain't right, you know, because... That's never happened before. Normally I'm watching that kind of stuff back there because you never know what could start leaking or what could, you know, break like that. So we welded that all back together. And then when we were back there, I was like, oh, might as well check those bolts, you know, because when you send a bunch of high moisture corn through it, it can, they wear stuff down. And I don't know if I was doing something wrong and loading it, but I definitely smashed the crap out of my finger and it hurts. Like I'm holding it right there. Ouchie. Big ouchie. I'm not trying to complain, but like, holy moly. That, is, that made me lightheaded. <laughs> we broke down right before we finished this field, and we had two more passes left, but now we're all done, and we're going to go cut a hole and some outside edges through the next field because it's still super green. So hopefully cutting a hole and around the edges will help that dry faster. And then we can cut that. We have another circle and then I think we have one more circle after this. And then we have some dry corn to cut and then we'll be on to our next stop. So I have no idea how long we're gonna be here. You never know. You literally never know. <laughs> opening up this new field. I normally like to stay back at good ways because you never know when they're gonna like change their mind and back up or go some other direction. Like, yeah, they're following the circle, but I just stay back. I also stay back because I like to watch what the combine does on those side hills so I know how far away from like what side of the hill I need to be. Anyway, those hills in a combine ride a little different than in a grain cart and I do not like hills at all anymore. I just like, no, nope, uh uh. <laughs> it's a no from me, dog. And not to be, <laughs> they're fine, but sometimes when you're real, real loaded up and you hit one of those hills just right, even just the side hill, you know, you're like on the edge of the side hill and it just makes you pucker up a little bit. Pucker factor is real. Got a little pheasant. I'm pretty sure that's what it is anyway. Uh, yep. Bunch of creatures and critters out here for show. Uh, well, now I'm getting a code for steering system redundancy loss or something like that. So, boss man's in a truck, handyman's also in a truck, and I think that if I know what the issue is, we fix this in another tractor. So, hopefully, it's just an O ring, and I'll show you what's going on. My hydraulic fluid is leaking so that's the problem that's coming up and it's not in the side glass anymore but we're gonna unload and then go fix it uh spoiler alert it was not an o-ring and not anything that i thought it would have been so that was a pain in the butt 
Okay, well that was a big mess and Jeff is bringing that hydraulic line that was leaking to town and I am riding in the truck to go to the pit. This is Corn Dog and Mike, he's trucking. He normally drives the combine, but we only have one combine up here and I just got a video on top of the uh, trailer, so lovely. other stuff that it gets mixed with. I'm gonna guess that's cake and then distillers. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. It's a guess, an educated guess. And then over here, so we've got the truck that just pulled up. We've got a tractor going over there. corn comes out of the trailer as the whole corn harvested out of the combine it goes into this pit it goes through one auger into this and then it goes from there into another auger into that hay buster and that's what grinds it up and then it gets conveyor belted out and then into that pile and then the tractor comes and pushes it up into that pile and that was a lot of corn pushed up in there it's like pushing it like a silage tractor almost and then there was another pile of stuff. So the cows don't just get fed the only cracked corn. Like that isn't the only part of their diet. It's all those other pieces and parts that I showed you. So there's hay that goes into it, silage possibly, distillers, uh, cake, and other things that they put in there. They put like molasses in it or something to make it all yeah, stick like together. It. Yeah, they put molasses in it. So I've made a video about total mix reactions earlier. I'll try to link that in the description of this video or in the video with Colin in Minnesota and I did that in March and it shows you like everything that goes into their ration so it makes a little more sense but it's basically a big dry smoothie for cows. And then Jeff brought the hydraulic line back from town. We have a wrench zip tied up there so it'll hold it and then I was holding it and Jeff has a flashlight and he's all crammed up in there. It was a pretty tight fit, and then we got it fixed. We poured hydraulic oil back into my tractor so it would fill it back into that sight glass because it lost quite a bit. And she's all fixed up. We added 15 gallons of hydraulic oil, and we have a new tube thingy-majiggy in there. I don't know what it's called, and I forgot to take a video of it, but it's right under the cab, basically, uh, by my right side, left side tires, not right side. I get my right and left mixed up a little bit, but it's all fixed. It was a pain in the butt, um, but it's all it's all done now. So we're good. We learned something new today. On to the next. All done. It's a little pitter patter on the windshield, but it's all right. Also, full circle moment here. Um, once the field is harvested, it still gets used. They put cows on that field, and we just got done harvesting it. Like, uh, I don't know. I, it's all a blur. We got done harvesting it last week. I think it's Tuesday. But they put cows on it and those are gonna run over all those corn stalks, eat all the stuff. It's another source of animal feed. And then we kind of got stuck waiting for corn to dry down. So we went down to Kansas to switch our other combine over to corn and Milo, um, get it all ready to go for when we move down there. And these are milo slash corn concave since we switch between crops we need to have those in so we just did those concaves and now we gotta put spacers in the grates is that one already spaced yeah. so we gotta do that to these ones nope, you might want to leave it like that i didn't know those were Don't start. set like that so we just took the covers off but those are spacers and the other thing we did was put the duels back on this combine as well. So we had to take those off to transport it from North Dakota down to Kansas because if you don't, then I'm pretty sure your load is too wide and it can cause issues. So we just take them off for safety and to get loaded up right. We just 
just started going. It is uh, eight in the morning. Got some deer down there. There's two of them. I think they're walking away from us at this point. Got the lovely rear end of a combine to stare at all day. We're gonna whack and stack away. Wow, he's big. I guess they didn't want to play deer versus deer hunt. Isn't that elk? looks more like elk than it does deer. It doesn't look like anything we have at home, that's what I know. So those did turn out to be elk. Um, we couldn't really see them from down the rows and when they stepped out I thought it... Boss man said it could have been mule deer but look at that big old boy run. I got him on the drum. I thought that was the coolest thing I've done this year. the day. Look at that big old boy. Oh, he's not as big as the other one, but they just keep running right out of the corn rows. There's some nice looking elk. see what you get to see pop out of these fields. You could have some elk popping out of here. You could have some crazy people popping out of here. You really never know. But I'm glad it's elk and not crazy people. I just wanted to share my raw and natural reaction to opening this. <laughs> I, I opened this little box and I thought it'd be tater tots and it was freaking cheesecake. Oh my gosh. Just want to clarify that I might look disgusted, but I am not disgusted in the slightest. I was just very shocked to teary eyes. And uh, Christina brought us lunch today. She is a local gal that we've made friends with through uh, the clubhouse slash bar slash whatever that we eat at most nights. And she wanted to come ride with us and give us food because she doesn't get to help with harvest this year from where she's from. And so. She brought us food! <laughs> she brought us cheesecake! <laughs> to top the day off, we had one more little unloading chain auger breakdown. Just lovely. I'd say my windows need washing, but that is a wrap for the night. Heck yeah. Then in my last video, I mentioned goat heads. So these are what goat heads look like up close. It's a little different than something else y'all call it, but we also call it puncture vine and we have a lot of it in Idaho. It's different than sand burrs, I believe is what you guys call it. And then that's what else came out of the, that's all the high moisture gunk that came out of the combine. So, and then it was super windy that day. Like it was blowing everywhere, but this is when we finally started on dry corn. All right, we finished uh, wet corn. What day is it? <laughs> uh, I think it's October 12th or 13th. We finished wet corn and started dry corn yesterday. I love dry corn so much more. So we finished this field. It was all dry corn around 15% moisture. And then we dump into this bin, but instead of running trucks everywhere, we just parked a truck over the auger and that is augering it out, coming out that bottom and then going up into that bin so that is how we do dry corn and it's a little different than wet corn and then they'll have trucks auger it back out later when we're unloading we can just set the auger gate well my gate on my grain cart is open to about three so i just leave it there and if it starts to pile up i'll just move forward or backwards but normally i don't have to slow it down at all so it works out pretty good. It does pile up in there, but not enough that I need to slow down or speed up. I wish I could document what we do on loading day more, but this loading day, we're in Nebraska and it's sandy. There's goat heads everywhere. I have sand in my eyeballs. Every time I bite down, there's sand in my teeth, but it's better than loading in 110 degree weather. So I'll take wind in my, sand in my teeth over sweat literally everywhere any day maybe not 
I don't know. Everyone asks what I drive on move days, and uh, it's not bad. It's the Suburban with the fuel trailer on it. Big loads only! So it is October 14th. Um, we're moving down to Kansas today. We have to make two trips because we don't have enough drivers. And we... It's going to be a lot of a change of scenery in Kansas just based on the yield. Um, no one's really excited for it and hopefully it goes by fast because it is pretty dry down there and it's not good. So it's going to, we were just cutting 200 plus bushel corn here in Nebraska. We're going to go down to about 15 bushel corn in Kansas. So irrigation and water makes a huge difference. guys that's all i have for you today you can catch me on all other platforms at ag with emma everywhere if you're looking for a more day-to-day -day of what emma and the harvest crew does be sure to check out my instagram uh the stories on there i post a lot and then i'm also on twitter facebook tiktok i make a lot of tiktoks so if you don't know you do now ag with emma everywhere and as always thanks for watching i'll catch you next time hasta la pasta